All right, let's get you the big breaking update because this could be more evidence that is now coming across as to a new twist to the terror plot that has now come out as far as the Coimbatore explosion death case is concerned. The NIA, which is currently investigating the case, Prapanch, I believe we have images, something that could be proved to be damning. That has now been recovered from the diseased residents, not just as far as uh, explosive materials, but there is more to it. Prapanch, over to you. Uh, uh, documents and uh, slate material that has been allegedly recovered from the deceased Jamisha Mobil's residence who was in fact killed in the blast that uh, took place on 23rd of October. Now in that particular slate, or there is a green slate uh, wherein it says that there are two parts to it. One is in Arabic and second was uh, mm -hmm. is that uh, will, will destroy anyone who dares to test the house of Allah. So this is one part of the uh, material. Second part is wherein there are three boxes and a circle. When in first box, second box, and third box, he says that it is uh, uh, children, elderly, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, youth. Uh, the middle box is youth, and uh, the middle box is youth, and first and last box that they are weak and have their duty. But however, in the uh, second box, that is the youth, the, it says that they are strong and jihad is duty. So this is the kind of uh, material that has been, uh, it is written all in Tamil and also in Arabic. Uh, uh, so uh, there's a difference in that. And in the third, uh, in fact, uh, material that we could see, it states that uh, Al-Quran, Hadith, and uh, there are it is very classification. So uh, human is classified into Kafirs and Muslims. Uh, hmm. And there are several other mentions of uh, about uh, uh, Islam, Hadith, Quran, and all those things in the material. So we could see that these are the uh, incriminating, uh, in fact, uh, several issues that have been allegedly, uh, uh, in fact, acquired from the house of Jamisha Mubin. Yes. Now, uh, these are the, in fact, this has happened after the yes. NIA took over the investigation because earlier we saw that NIA had taken over the investigation after several explosives were found in the Jamisha Mubin's residence and it was also mentioned in the FIR that uh, uh, materials with related to jihad was also found over there. So we could now see that uh, these are allegedly the visuals that have been obtained from Jamisha Mubin's uh, uh, mit, uh, house. These are the materials allegedly Absolutely, Prapanch. There. Uh, the and Koyambatur blast took place on the 23rd of October and initial input suggested that there was jihadi literature that was recovered from Jamisha Mubin's premises. Meghna, you have the details. You've accessed the flowchart. Take us through that and what exactly does it convey? Yes, this is a chilling flowchart of how jihad ought to be carried out. You wouldn't believe it, but these words, these little boxes are actually categorizing people as to who is fit and who is not fit to carry out a jihad against the alleged kafirs. Now this box, this we have been told is what it says shy in Tamil. The second box says that this is the bit which represents the youth. In the third box, you have the elderly. Here it says that it is the youth and you can see the arrow mark which comes down from the youth saying that the youth are the one who are strong enough to carry out jihad. They are said that the elderly and the children are too weak to carry out jihad. It is the youth who must carry out jihad. Now this is the call of incitement a step by step if you may of how jihad ought to be organized who should be carrying it out and how the entire flow should be there of jihad to rule out and ensure that there are no kafirs left now this kind of a diabolical uh, plot siddharth is especially very worrisome because here it hopes to not just incite but also give a flow chart of who should be doing what and what kind of a role every part of this specific community should be playing when they have a fight and the call has been for a jihad against kafir. This step by step shows that it's part of a larger diabolical plot. It's not just a lone wolf attack. It's not just one person deciding that I'm going to carry out this attack. But this is a systematic plan for jihad and that is the end game and there are no two ways about it. This is the diabolical plot which is now very very clear. It is undeniable. And unfortunately, this chilling flowchart is evidence of what was being planned. Unfortunately, not just for one person, but he was planning this for an entire community to wipe out those 
he has condemned as kafirs. Well, this is the Coimbatore Jihad note there, isn't it, Prapanch? Because this is not just a note, it's an entire flowchart. It is now for the activities to do in the list as far as what could be the next possible step. Not just explosives that have been recovered during the searches, what we're carrying out, but this is incriminating material and evidences as well. This is the extent of radicalization that had happened as far as not just Jamisha Mubin is concerned, but also the others as well who could be seen in that similar CCTV footages. That's right. In fact, uh, we could also add that, in fact, uh, uh, several, he was on the uh, watch list by the, uh, which was provided by the special uh, division of Tamil Nadu police and he was, in fact, uh, 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 questioned by NIA in 2019 and, in fact, in connection to the uh, mastermind who was associated in the Easter uh, bombing attacks. Now, he was let off due to lack of evidences earlier because uh, he was also told that because uh, the intelligence officials had uh, told that he was constantly uh, uh, getting money from others, uh, complaining of a heart issue and eye, eye problem. So these were various concerns that he was uh, telling to others. Right, people. Prapan, let However, me just interrupt you because we're getting a reaction from Mr. C. Rajshekaran on the phone line. Mr. Rajshekaran, several incriminating material now recovered from the premises of Misha Mobin, including a jihadi flowchart uh, that now we managed to access, uh, which has a purported intention of indoctrinating young minds for the purpose of radical jihad. Your perspective on what the NIA has now managed to recover? See, what the NIA uh, document which you are claiming, from where did you get it? Where this, this, this document, incriminating document, surface the public domain? I have my strong doubts. Point number one. Point number two, 72 hours, the Tamil Nadu police had investigated the matter and made them good seizures and handed over to the NIA. The NIA was in command or is in command for the last five days, five to six days. And uh, the documents suddenly come out in the public domain and everybody is discussing about this. This document, incriminating document itself is... But Mr. Rajashekran, had this incident not happened, nobody would have even known. The questions that were being raised also by the opposition in the state of Tamil Nadu was that the Coimbatore police, in a way, is trying to deflect, not even calling it as a case in the first place. See, you cannot insinuate something which is not at the uh, reality or truth because there was a car which was traveling in the VRs and the cylinder inside blast and the, the materials were seized. So keeping that all in account, the Tamil Nadu police investigated the matter for 72 hours. First 20 hours, they investigated, made seizures. First 40 hours, they, they arrested five people. Next, uh, next, uh, next day, third day, they had handed over the whole case to NIA. And the NIA is investigating the case for five days. And all this happened within a span of uh, eight, nine days. And it has a bigger conspiracy, sir, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rajashekaran, for joining us here on the broadcast. Lalit Ambedar is also with us. Lalit Ambedar, as far as such kind of thinking, radicalization is concerned, you may know well more about it, how quickly it spreads. And we are talking about Coimbatore here, and it's deep-rooted as far as the extent of radicalization and indoctrination is happening. Uh, everything is happening very systematically. They are following a particular methodology. If you recall, when you when you you got the papers of uh, uh, PFI, they have a set target by 2040, uh, 2047. Yeah, they want to have Gazwai Hind accomplished, and and they are pursuing it dedicate with dedication with dedication. It's pan Islamism inspired, and what we are trying to do is we're only by chance by sheer chance we find out an opportunity to catch them. But there's no uh, method, there, there's no agenda, there's no white, uh, there's no simple uh, plan to, to crush uh, growing Islamism inspired fissiveness in the country. And Coimbatore has been vulnerable. You remember the blast they have taken, uh, that took place earlier. And they have everything they are following as per the protocol how to destroy this nation from within. And unfortunately, not only this is radicalization, the people who are on the who are the jihadis actually undertaking this destruction of India agenda, they are pursuing this agenda, but there are people also belonging to the same Kada who are using the Indian constitution, subverting from within. Inside, from within. Ask anybody from the, from the anti Modi uh, group of politicians, they will still find apparent, no, you're not doing it, this is, uh, this is uh, dissent, this is that, this is that. So we have to be very, very careful. And Kashmir is an example. 
They are doing it everything to destroy India from within, both mainstream Islamists as well as the underground Islamists. But we tend to believe that the mainstream are following the constitutional methodology, so we have to under, we have to we, we don't have to put pressure on them. We don't have to control them. And there is a test I have been always saying I maintain. Unless right. and until right, you Mr. thank you for your perspective. Yes, there's radicalism that is actually growing in the state of Tamil Nadu, which has been a victim of terror attacks of this nature, Coimbatore specifically, in 1998. But let me once again go back to Meghna. But before coming to Meghna, Mr. Narayan Tirupati of the BJP uh, actually joins us. Uh, Mr. Tirupati, there was an opinion that we got sometime recently from Mr. C.R. Rajshekaran uh, that uh, let us not undermine the efforts undertaken by the Tamil Nadu police so far in investigating this matter and anything that the NIA now produces as evidence, including this jihadi literature, must be treated with a pinch of salt. What's your response to that kind of a reaction coming in? No, this literature or these uh, documents would have been taken by the police uh, on the day one of, uh, or, or maybe on 24th of uh, October, the day next to the blast. So, but that is what we have been saying, that this is an act of terror. But I don't understand why the police and the uh, Nadu the government are saying that this is just a cylinder blast. Now, we don't blame the Tamil Nadu uh, police, uh, just, just like that. We say that on um, you know 2022, a list of uh, 96 persons list were sent by the Tamil Nadu State Agents to the uh, Commissioner of Police. Why have you not taken any action? Even the Misa Mubin was there. And on 3722, again, uh, these, these people of uh, there was a circular stating that um, there will be a lone wolf attack and other attack after uh, Vinay Chaturthi, that is Ganesh Chaturthi, and the other festivals. So that is why we have been asking that uh, it, it is a lackluster attitude of the Tamil Nadu government and police that has led to this uh, issue. Right. Let me, in fact, take this across to Mr. Arasan Singh as well, uh, uh, who's joining us. Uh, Colonel Arasan Singh. Uh, your response to the kind of literature that routinely now gets uh, recovered from areas, especially those who are, uh, have affiliations with groups like the ISIS. Now, Jamisha Mubin uh, and the module that he was allegedly part of also had links with the module that had executed the 1998 Coimbatore blasts, as well as links uh, with uh, members of the Islamic State as well. So what are we to make of the of literature, the jihadi literature that has now been recovered from Mubin's premises. No, there was, uh, there is nothing, about, you know, local about the jihad, you know, in that area. Uh, because I, um, if I may explain to you that, you know, Coimbatore is the part of the same Malabar jihad ecosystem, you know, the Kasargod, uh, Kanur, you know, Kozikod, uh, your um, Malapuram, and then your. Uh, uh, Wynard and then Coimbatore. So Coimbatore is ideally located to serve as the hub. That is why you had, you know, blasts in 98, uh, 1998, where, you know, providentially, I mean, uh, L.K. Advani, you know, uh, I mean, he escaped. Uh, he escaped uh, those blasts, but so many people were, about more than 60 people were killed. And between 1998 and now, nothing has changed. Remember, in 98 also there was a DMK government in power, and now also there is a DMK government in power. Even then, the master, I mean, one of the key uh, persons involved was one S.A. Basha. And this time his nephew has, uh, is behind the bars. He has been picked up by the, uh, you know, the, uh, the police, mm. and he has been interrogated. So, 20, how many, right, uh, almost 24 years now, nothing has changed. The same discourse, same narrative. But, sir, how right. deeper is this discourse that has gone into and the extent of it? I mean, even if you talk about globally, it is just not about India here that we are talking about. Links to the Colombo blast is also something that is now being cited with the people there who have been taken into custody. Mr. Singh, thank you very much for joining us here on the broadcast. Coming back to you on Meghna, uh, when it comes to more documents that have been seized and recovered, what else is there and what else is present in those documents? Absolutely, Amit. In fact, we just first showed you the flowchart which was made of who who should be playing what role when this jihad against Kafir is to be taken place? And this is what hopes to divide a community into three different parts. Now we are going to show you how even humanity itself stands divided in the mind of this man, Mubair, the main accused. This is what it says. It says human. As you can see, it's given 
and divided into two parts. What does this say? This says kafir. That one part of humans, they are all kafirs. Who are the others? Everyone else, as per Mubain, is a Muslim. So either you are a Muslim or you are a kafir. These are the only two distinctions, the only two divisions which humanity has been divided under. And you're absolutely right. The reason why this is so very disturbing is because two of the accused allegedly have already confessed to having links and having met members of the ISIS who were part of the Easter attacks which had happened in Colombo. So when they are discussing these plans, these plans are not being in solitude. It's part of a larger plot which is now slowly unraveling. Yes, it should be taken with a pinch of salt at the end of it. These are mere flow charts. But when you have this kind of a diabolical mindset which is being revealed and these are the people who have managed to carry out a cylinder blast. It could have been an actual blast gone wrong. That's what the NI is already looking into. But they've already carried out at least one such attack. Are there others that they had been plotting. The larger plot is now only slowly unraveling but it is the mindset which is being reflected which is why these flow charts of jihad as we are calling it here on times now exclusively that we've managed to access this flow chart of jihad is very important to decode the diabolical mind of a terrorist, a terror accused who's actually divided humanity into two parts. Either you are a Muslim and anyone else who's not a Muslim stands a kafir and had yet should be then made a victim of what he calls a jihad which needs to be unleashed. Right, thanks a lot for that, Meena. At least the terrorists are absolutely clear about what the term jihad actually means should political parties be using that term.